this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and here I am with the uh, two flagship devices from two different uh, manufacturers, the Samsung Galaxy S3 and the HTC One X. Now, uh, both devices have been on the market for a, a little while now, um, but the universal question seems to remain which one's the best. Now, they're very similar in many respects, um, both being flagship uh, devices from their respective manufacturers, Samsung and HTC, um, but it's a question we frequently get. Um, and uh, it's not an easy one to answer either. So uh, we're going to have a look at the two handsets, um, have a little recap on their specification. I'm going to run a benchmark. Obviously this isn't the uh, be-all and end-all in terms of comparison, um, but we want to just cover a few things off. Um, and this will be a continuing um, maybe video or review feature over the next um, maybe few days or so. I'm actually using both of these devices, um, carrying them both at the, at the same time. Um, so we'll be comparing them both um, over, well, maybe maybe the next, uh, certainly a few weeks, if not the next month, uh, to just sort of get a feel for what I feel um, is the one I want to keep uh, and the one that I would um, deem to be, uh, in inverted commas, the best. So uh, just to, to recap uh, in terms of sort of specification and everything else, uh, the Galaxy S3, uh, forward-facing uh, camera, uh, LED on one side, ambient light, proximity sensors. It's a 4.8 inch display, uh, 1280 or 720 by 1280 uh, pixels, so it is a particularly high resolution display. Uh, this one is Super AMOLED, um, capable of doing 16 million colours. So it's got Gorilla Glass on the front, um, which obviously is very good, stops you scratching it, um, and it's resistant to actually cracking and uh, you know, uh, uh, damage and so forth. Uh, other spec, well we've got an internal storage capacity, uh, this one is the 16 gig model, there's a 32 and a 64 gig model available as well, and uh, just taking a look around the outside, uh, this is obviously the, uh, this one's called the blue, it's sort of almost a steel blue finish to it, up and down volume control on one side, uh, on the bottom you have the micro USB sync charge connector and the microphone, left hand side is the, sorry right hand side is just the power button for toggling power on and off, on top, uh, another microphone which uh, is used for noise reduction, and then a 3.5 headphone, uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone connector on the top, uh, which you can use with uh, either a wired headset or indeed your own headphones. On the back, uh, I'll just pop the back cover off actually. I'll do that. Uh, there we go. So underneath the uh, the back cover here, we have the battery, which is obviously in place at the moment. I'm going to take that out. Um, there is space for a micro SDHD memory card, which will indeed support up to uh, 64 gig uh, micro SD memory card. So that's uh, a little bit more unusual. That's the, high, the new higher capacity or higher capacity uh, memory cards that are supported by this device. Uh, and then a SIM card space there as well. Back cover is very thin, but um, once it's actually on and in place, just snap it all on all the way around. It is um, you know, perfectly secure, no problems with it. And as I say, this sort of steel blue finish is quite kind of cool. There's an 8 megapixel focus camera on the back with a really quite a large and very bright um, LED flash loudspeaker next to it. The um, camera does support 1280, sorry, 1080p uh, video recording, which is uh, pretty cool. And the forward facing camera also supports 720p video recording, so that's kind of cool. Uh, in terms of the rest of the spec, uh, I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible. Android operate OS uh, 4.0.04, is that right? 4.0.4, there we go. Uh, ice cream sandwich anyway, uh, that's already on there. It's a quad core 1.4 gigahertz Cortex processor um, with a Mali 400 uh, MP um, GPU. And you've got proximity sensors, ambient light sensors, gyro and all that kind of stuff. GPS and all those sorts of things. Uh, it's actually one gig of RAM as well, so it's a pretty good specification. I'm going to pop back to one side, uh, we'll just turn to the HTC One X now. Um, and specification, it's kind of similar in some respects. It's got the forward facing camera uh, and the loudspeaker at the top. The display is 4.7 inch versus 4.8 on the Galaxy, so it's you know, marginally smaller, really difficult to, even with them side by side, difficult to tell the difference to be honest with you. But 4.7 inch display of the same resolution, so that's 720 by 1280 uh, pixels. Um, it isn't Super AMOLED, instead HTC use a Super IPS LCD2. Um, also has the Gorilla Glass on the front um, to protect it as well, so similar in terms of features there. No physical button on the bottom, whereas the Galaxy has the physical button, we have just the um, 
uh, capacitive touch buttons on the side, sorry on the bottom. Left hand side the USB sync charge connector, on the bottom loudspeaker hole, right hand side up and down volume control on the top, power button, another microphone hole there as well and we have the um, three and a half mil headphone connector uh, for uh, headphones and uh, indeed the wide headset. Uh, another 8 megapixel autofocus camera on the back with LED flash, it's a much smaller LED flash though. Back cover does not remove on this, the battery is sealed in place, you cannot replace the battery um, as you can with the Galaxy S3, um, which in some people's mind is a huge downside in, in uh, straight off the bat. Um, I can see the point, um, you know, why you'd want to be able to change your battery is very good. There are also uh, the SIM card socket or slot or whatever you want to call it, tray I guess you'd call it the top, uh, which has a little removal hole uh, in the same way that uh, the iPhone has. This is a micro SIM on a tray and you do have to use a little tool to remove it. Again that's something that sort of has uh, been a bit of a negative comment and has frustrated some people. Um, other spec, well let's stick with the most important things, Android OS uh, ice cream sandwich, so 4.0, um, upgradable for 4.1, 4.1 isn't uh, on here just at the moment. Uh, the CPU is a quad core 1.5 gigahertz processor, so on paper um, it should be slightly marginally faster than the S3 um, and has the Tegra 3 chipset and uh, GeForce uh, GPU. Uh, has the same uh, one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, this is the 32 gig internal storage model. The other thing about this handset versus that one is the One X does not have an external memory card so you cannot put in a micro SDHC memory card or whatever you have a fixed amount of RAM. Very much going or attempting to go I guess the direction that the uh, Apple do have gone with the iPhone uh, and keeping everything fixed. Um, you can do video recording t uh, 1080p with the rear and uh, 720p with the front facing camera and again in terms of the rest of other bits and pieces are on here you've got your GPS, um, ambient light, proximity sensor, uh, gyros and everything else so uh, very similar uh, in that respect as well. So one of the things we wanted to look at is to actually benchmark the two. As I say this isn't um, the be all and end all of comparisons but it's just to give us an idea because again we're frequently asked which one's better, which one's faster. So I'm going to run uh, a benchmark on the two of them. So uh, where did I put that? So I'm going to run quadrant on both and you'll be able to see them side by side. Um, and I'm going to leave the video running so you can see the two and I'm going to try and hit them both at the same time uh, now. And it's pretty close in getting them to run, start running at the same time, so to give you an idea and we'll just look at the numbers as well. Both cranking through rather quickly uh, in terms of their CPU tests. Both of them have been patched um, or upgraded to the latest versions of the OS and updates and firmware that um, have been made available uh, through regular means. I haven't uh, unlocked either of them, they're running uh, st uh, stock firmware. Um, as I say, just patched or upgraded to the latest versions that have been made available and offered for download. See, so they're both pretty similar in speed in these tests. Um, and to give you an idea, I think you can perhaps make out there the difference between the colour on displays. Um, to the human eye, I don't know how it's coming across on the camera. The S3 just is that little bit better on display. So there we go, there's our benchmark results in, so let's see the answers. And there we go. Pretty telling. Um, let's move these closer so you can see them. See the benchmark answers. So the S3 on the left is 5379. And on the right, the HTC One X, 4839. Um, so the S3 is about 10% mm, faster in the benchmark uh, versus the One X, which is quite interesting because, again, on paper, 
the uh, One X has the faster processor, which clock speed itself obviously isn't much of a comparison, which is very clear here. Um, but it just goes to show the difference between those. So the, the S3 is benchmarking quicker than than the One X there. Um, I don't know how well you can make out the difference on the display there, but the S3 definitely has the richer colours um, versus the One X is slightly more washed out by comparison. Um, that's not to say that the uh, One X isn't a good display. It is, because if you don't have that one, you'd still say that was an excellent display, but putting the two side by side, the S3 is that bit better. Anyway, well, this is a, just a kind of a starter for comparing the two. I want to do a little video, as I say, we get asked the question quite often, so you can make your own mind up, I guess, uh, in terms of what we've just seen here. Um, and I'll add to this, um, what we're going to be looking at uh, along with this is we'll take some videos or on the devices, we'll look at some of the uh, photos that the cameras take on both of these devices, um, and we'll do some other comparisons, and I am going to be living with these devices over the next uh, certainly a couple of weeks, and I'll tell you which one I like the best. Um, and I guess a lot of it's going to boil down to um, your how much you like the um, overlay. Um, a lot of people do like the HTC Sense user interface um, versus those people that would just actually prefer um, a more stock feel. Um, go back out here a more stock feel to the uh, user interface. I mean, this isn't obviously stock, but um, in terms of the overlay that's on there. But uh, anyway, I'll be back soon. Uh, I'll do a bit more of a, uh, a summary in terms of the review that we're going to do, um, and I'll do some more comparisons over the next couple of days. Uh, in the meantime, if you want to follow us on Twitter, it's twitter.com slash tracingmat or facebook.com slash tracingmat.co.uk. Um, if you have any questions about uh, either of these devices, please ask me. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Or if you want to see anything else in, in further videos or future videos, uh, please do let me know. I have just noticed there's a difference in time, uh, but never mind. Um, but yeah, if you want to ask any questions about these, then please do so. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews on tracingmat.co.uk. But for now, thanks for watching.